Their appearance and physical characteristics of this predator have already earned it some frightening and fitting nicknames, such as the Devil Horn. The Carnotaurus was not only a top predator, but also a cult dinosaur, captivating people worldwide. What makes Carnotaurus a top predator? When and where did it live and what purpose did its horn serve? Today we will take a closer look at this fascinating dinosaur. Carnotaurus sastre, an abelosaurid from the Upper Cretaceous of Argentina. Abelosauridae, the most well-known subgroup within Abelosauroidea, are descendants of Ceratosaurus from the Upper Jurassic. Abelosaurids are characterized by robust hind limbs and heads adorned in various ways. For instance, Carnotaurus had horns on its head, hence its name, which translates to meat-eating bull. The species epithet Sastre was given in honor of Angel Sastre, who discovered Carnotaurus' fossils on his ranch. Carnotaurus is estimated to have weighed between 1.3 to 2.1 metric tons and reached a length of 7.5 to 8 meters or 24.5 to 26 feet. It was one of the larger Belosaurus alongside Abelosaurus, Mojangosaurus, Pycnominosaurus and Icrixinertosaurus. Jose Fernando Bonaparte first discovered and described Carnotaurus. Its fossils were found in the Potro Sastre farm near Bajada Moreno in the Argentinian province of Chubut. Carnotaurus has since become a cult figure among dinosaurs, with numerous appearances in various documentaries, movies and TV series, including Disney's Dinosaurs, Jurassic World, Terra Nova, Prehistoric Planet, Life After the Dinosaurs, Dinosaur King and Camp Cretaceous. Carnotaurus continues to inspire and fascinate paleontologists and dinosaur enthusiasts worldwide. What sets Carnotaurus apart from other predators are its horns, which sat above its size and could reach lengths of up to 15 cm or 0.5 feet. These horns were formed by its frontal bones. Paleontologists are confident that Carnotaurus had keratin layers in its horns, but they disagree with a keratin had a significant impact on the size of the horns. There are several theories about the function of these horns. One theory is that they were used for display. The thickness of the horns, however, leads paleontologists to believe that they had a physical purpose and were used in combat among conspecifics similar to how modern rams use their horns today. One study even reports the horns could withstand collisions between two Carnotaurus at speeds of 20.5 km per hour or 12.7 miles per hour. The head and neck support this idea of fierce clashes. The head was relatively short and the neck was muscular, allowing for rapid strikes and making Carnotaurus' horns durable. Not all paleontologists support this theory. Some believe that the horns were used to push and shove other Carnotaurus slowly, similar to modern reptiles. The most controversial theory regarding the horns is that Carnotaurus used them to injure or kill smaller prey. Even if its horns were not weapons, Carnotaurus possessed other features that made it an effective predator. Carnotaurus had 62 long, serrated and slender teeth in its mouth, closely spaced together. Its shows and skull muscles allowed it to deliver extremely fast bites and withstand substantial pressure, enabling it to tear into its prey, preventing escape. Carnotaurus's arms, on the other hand, were shorter than those of the T-Rex. The lower parts of its arms are robust and may have aided in stability while running. Additionally, Carnotaurus may have used its arms to manipulate prey before delivering bites. Perhaps they also served for display purposes as seen in Prehistoric Planet. It was perfect. Perfect. Everything. Down to the last minute details. However, its arms are so short that they may not have had any practical use at all. Another feature that made Carnotaurus stand out was its speed despite its size. Carnotaurus had a thigh bone that was highly flexible and movable, allowing its legs to endure higher speeds. Its thigh bone structure was more efficient than that of a human, but less efficient than that of an ostrich. Computer models estimated maximum speed at 56 km per hour or 34.7 miles per hour. Slightly slower than a puma, but at least 16 km, 10 miles faster than a velociraptor. However, the thigh bone is not the only secret to Carnotaurus' speed. The movement muscle in the tails of dinosaurs, also known as the caudofemoralis, was the best indicator of speed in dinosaurs. Most dinosaurs had a T-shaped movement muscle in their tails, whereas Carnotaurus had a V-shaped one. This shape allowed the muscle to become much larger and enabled Carnotaurus to achieve its tremendous running speeds. 
Due to its high speed, it sacrificed agility and couldn't change direction quickly, unlike dromaeosaurs for example. What else makes this dinosaur different is its skin. Carnotaurus fossils show that its skin was very scaly and entirely featherless. It also had randomly distributed conical nodules surrounded by a network of long elongated diamond shaped scales that could also be subcircular. There are two theories regarding the purpose of these nodules. Either they served as a protection during hunting and combat or as an artistic feature that may have been brightly colored and patterned, possibly used for courtship or intimidating male conspecifics. Additionally, Carnotaurus had a degree of binocular vision due to its skull structure. All these features make Carnotaurus a highly unique dinosaur, one that could hardly be imagined even in science fiction. Carnotaurus lived in the La Colonia formation in Argentina from the Capanian to the Maastrichtian stages of the late Cretaceous. The environment at the time consisted of partially enclosed coastal waters with brackish water through which rivers flowed as well as smart flats and coastal plains. The climate was a mix of dry and wet periods. Dinosaurs from La Colonia include the Saltosaurine Titanomachia as well as the Abelisaurids, Colican and Carnotaurus. <laughs> Apart from these three, there have only been fragmentary findings of hadrosaurs, some other sauropods, and chylosaurs and several pharaopods in this formation. It is quite certain that Carnotaurus was the apex predator of its region. From a non-dinosaur perspective, Carnotaurus' realm also has three different types of plesiosaurs, turtles, various lungfish, crocodiles, snakes, various lizards, and approximately 300 species of mammals. Many paleontologists believe that Carnotaurus specialized in smaller prey. In this scenario, Carnotaurus would deliver fast bites to pierce its prey. Occasionally it might have hunted larger prey as well, given its ability to hold on to larger prey. One study supports the theory that it primarily hunted small prey, estimating Carnotaurus' bite force at 3341 newtons. However, some believe the Carnotaurus specialized in larger prey and had a much greater bite force. Like the Allosaurus, Carnotaurus also had a strong rear skull, a short snout and serrated teeth, leading researchers to believe it hunted in a similar way. It would tear its prey apart through rapid bites, causing massive blood loss. Some even believe the Carnotaurus exclusively hunted large prey, potentially even sauropods. Carnotaurus was one of the last dinosaurs on Earth, as it also went extinct at the end of the Cretaceous period. The decrease of dinosaur diversity may have been to abiotic factors. Specifically China serves as such an example as between 68 and 66 million years ago there was a lower diversity among dinosaurs than before. This was associated with factors like global climate fluctuations, changes in sea levels, plate tectonic movements and the Deccan Trap eruptions. A similar fate may have befallen South America and the rest of the world. And even if some Carnotaurus specimens were still present at the end of the Cretaceous, the aftermath of the Chicxulub impact event likely sealed their fate. Thus, one of the top predators of the Upper Cretaceous in Argentina had also fallen. That concludes the video on Carnotaurus. I hope you learned something new or interesting. For more about Megaraptor, check out one of these bloops. If you want to get to know me more, you can also check out Instagram for fitness stuff or Twitter for more dinosaur stuff. And with that, I wish you a splendid day or evening. Goodbye.